So, it's time to get started. We're going to make some diet changes. And the whole idea of the Kickstart is we're not planning our far off future. It's a very short term program to kick us out of some bad habits. We're going to be on as close to a perfect diet as humanly possible. There is no long term commitment. But before we start, let's make sure that we're all clear on what a healthy diet really consists of. We're going to set the animal products aside. We'll keep the oily foods to an absolute minimum. The weight loss becomes easy. This is the kind of diet that encourages the narrowed arteries to open up again, makes cholesterol levels plummet. And this probably sounds rather challenging. How am I going to do all of these things with foods? Well, let's break it into two steps. Step one, don't change your diet. You're not ready. Step one is to think about the foods that might work for me and just try them out for a week or so, and then maybe I'll get ready. So take a piece of paper, and let me ask you to do this. Jot down breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Actually, let's make some headings because what we're going to do now is we're going to think of what could I actually have for breakfast or lunch or dinner or snacks that I actually would like to eat, but the rules are it's got to be something that doesn't have animal products, and it's going to keep the oils very, very low. So our goal now is to write down some ideas of foods that we'd really like to have. Okay, we're going to start with breakfast, then go to lunch, then go to dinner. So for breakfast, how about some crepes? These are made with green chilies and oyster mushrooms. Look pretty good? How about some pancakes? These are blueberry pancakes, and I'm serving these with bacon and sausage that happens to be the veggie versions of bacon and sausage that you'll see at a lot of stores nowadays. Um, I've made some oatmeal, but this is my special spicy pumpkin oatmeal. But if you want, it can be just regular old-fashioned oatmeal with some cinnamon and raisins or blueberries or whatever makes it something that you'd really like. Uh, how about lunch? Here is a white bean and tomato salad. French country stew. Very easy, very inexpensive, but delicious. And here's a sloppy joe, but this one is made of tempeh, which is a soy product and doesn't have any of the cholesterol or animal fat that you have in the meat versions. Now, you can also go simply with some minestrone soup, tomato soup, maybe split pea, veggie chili. You can get a bean burrito, a veggie burger. There, there's so many choices. Vegetable stir fry. Maybe you're going out for a submarine sandwich. Leave off the meat and cheese. Have all the vegetable fixings. Or maybe a hummus uh, wrap with sun-dried tomatoes. Perfect. Okay. How about dinner? Asparagus soup. Doesn't that look good? Udon noodles. Italian fusilli with sun-dried tomatoes. Mmm. Delicious. Stuffed peppers. These are stuffed with black beans and rice. Very healthy, very filling, delicious. And we made a pizza, but you can leave off the contraband, the high cholesterol foods, and instead we've got all the veggies. It can be spinach, it can be mushrooms, tomatoes, you, you name it. Delicious pizza. Now, about half of my patients have the room service gene. By that I mean you're not going to cook, you're never going to cook, and a healthy diet might change your body, but it does not change your personality. So if you are too impatient to cook right now, you are going to still be too impatient to cook when you're following a healthy diet. So your job now is to think about the convenience foods that work for you. So if you're having frozen pizza now, go to the store and get the frozen vegan pizza. Or if you're going to the fast food place and getting the greasy meat taco, well, try out the bean burrito, hold the cheese, and you get the idea. The idea is what works for your life. So we're going to write those down. We're going to see which foods we really like. So step one, Figure out the foods you like, take a week or so, and, and test them out. Step two is now that we know which foods we really like, we're going to do a three-week test drive and see what they can really do for us. Okay? So that means every breakfast, every lunch, every dinner, we're going to really have these foods that we now know we like. We're not going to set a foot wrong, but it's only three weeks. So at the end of that time, you can see what you think. Usually two things happen. The first is you feel better. You're starting to lose weight. Your energy is coming up. If you had digestive problems, those are gone within 24 to 48 hours for a lot of people. Your joints start feeling better. If you have diabetes, if you've got high blood pressure, everything is starting to turn around and go better. And the second thing is that your tastes start to change. And you're not expecting that, but you start to no longer crave those fatty, greasy foods that got us into a little bit of a pickle. So the key here is to make a complete break, but for a very short time. And I've got one other tip. I call this transition foods. And this is actually something that I learned about from my own mother. My mother and my father and our family lived in Fargo, North Dakota. And my mom had a very high cholesterol level. And I started saying to my mother, you know what? You really ought to start changing your diet. And I gave her all kinds of advice. And I gave her books. And you know what? My mother ignored everything I said. <laughs> and 
as time went on, she still had a really high cholesterol level, and this started to be a problem for me. My mother would pay no attention. I have been funded by the National Institutes of Health. <laughs> I've written several books. I conduct research studies. I publish my results, and my own mother is my most difficult patient. And by the way, finally, I figured out what had gone wrong. I am my mother's third-born child. Are any of you third-born children? Did your parents ever pay attention to anything you ever said? <laughs> Listen. The truth comes out when you look at the family photo album. There's lots of pictures of number one. There's some pictures of number two, but to find you, you've got to look in the index. Okay? You can look at your mother straight in the eye and say, Mother, you've got hypercholesterolemia. You probably have atherosclerosis. She thinks it's cute, you know, big words. But she's not paying any attention to you at all. So one day, my mother's own physician said, Mrs. Barnard, you're in trouble. You need to start cholesterol-lowering drugs. So she said, well, wait a minute. I'm not sure I want to be on medicines for the rest of my life just to deal with this problem. She goes home, she picked up a book I wrote, and she said, Neil told me that if I make these healthy foods, my cholesterol level ought to fall. My mother does it. My mother became a vegan for about seven weeks, and she went back to see the doctor. The doctor checked her cholesterol, and he walks in the room. He looks at the lab slip. He looks at her. He looks at the slip again, and he says, uh, I think there's something wrong with our laboratory. <laughs> Her cholesterol level had fallen dramatically, so much so that he was convinced it was a laboratory error, and he said, come back later, we'll fix the machine. And she said, wait a minute. If that really is my cholesterol, would I need medicine? And he said, no, this is like a teenager's cholesterol level. This is perfectly healthy. You wouldn't need it at all. Thank you. Bye. My mother goes home, picks up the phone and says, Neil, why didn't you tell me about this before? <laughs> well... The light bulb went off in my mom's head. She decided that the whole world needs to be on this wonderful vegan diet that saves you from medicine, starting with my father. Well, now, my father grew up in a cattle ranch, but my dad has one advantage that every man born in 1925 has, which is he doesn't know where the kitchen is. My father has never shopped for food. He has never prepared a meal. He has never cleaned up after a meal in his whole life. When he's hungry, the food comes. When he's finished, the plate's go somewhere and if you stick around for a few hours it all starts again so my mother takes advantage of this she goes to the health food store and she'll get a really good bread and some romaine lettuce and Italian tomatoes and she'll slice them up and put some Dijon mustard and phony bologna she'll put one of these fake ham fake meat kinds of you know what I'm talking about these things that they taste like turkey or ham or bologna but they aren't actually made of meat and they're not necessarily the pinnacle of art, but if you've got a dyed-in-the-wool meat-eating husband, it's a pretty good trick. And you know what? He's been quite happy with them. And as years have gone by, she's trying all different kinds of products. And you know what? I now have two vegetarian parents, and only one of them actually knows it. <laughs> now, the moral of this story is I am not suggesting that these transition foods are really terribly gourmet. They're really not. But you know, if it's birthday time and all the kids are coming over, don't feed them lentil loaf. They're going to beat your kid up. Instead, feed them like, like those, those soy hot dogs or something. They're a whole lot healthier than what goes into a real hot dog, if you've seen those. And they'll think you're making a cool political statement by serving them. Okay? So the transition foods are the meat substitutes, the dairy substitutes, that are a bridge to healthier eating. That's the way I like to think about them. So we're going to set the animal products aside. We're going to keep the oils really low. We're going to start just by getting to know some new foods, and then we'll do a three-week test to see how you do. So many people are really struggling. They're burdened with extra weight and with serious health problems that come along with it, and they're really not sure what to do. And children are paying the very same kind of price, often really early in life. Well, we've done the research. We know enough to get started. So don't worry about what you're going to eat 10 years from now. Don't worry about 20 years from now. Just give healthy foods a try right now. Let them kickstart your weight loss, kickstart your health. We can conquer those less than healthy habits. Your body really can heal. Now is the time to get on the track to a slimmer body, a healthier body. Let's spread the word as far and wide as we can. Let's work together. Let's win this thing. Thanks very much. <laughs>